when I was a teenager, my parents were pretty permissive about what I could and could not do. I guess I should just say what I could do, as they never really bothered to tell me what I couldn't do anyway. Because of this, after school, I would spend all my time at my best friend Reed's house. He had a lot more video game systems than I did and more variety of games to play, so I could spend hours and hours in his parents' basement with him, playing them all night long. I would then walk home really late at night. My entire family would generally be asleep around this time. This was a regular thing for many years, so by the time this story happened, it was pretty much routine. There was one thing I always noticed on the way home, though. That was, there was this house that was a completely normal-looking house. Didn't really look any different than any houses you'd see around it, and wasn't really out of place either. For some reason, though, for the entire four years from junior high school to now, the house had always been for sale. No one seemed to ever live in it no matter what. I know you know about places like this. People see houses that are unoccupied, and they make up all sorts of stories about them. I don't believe in that sort of thing, though. You know, the whole house is haunted, so no one wants to buy it sort of thing. Regardless of what I believe, though, I can tell you that it was a creepy and imposing sight, sitting there all lonely and unoccupied. When I was around 17 years old on a Friday night, I'd been over at Reed's house really late. It was a weekend, so it was around 2 a.m. or so. I began making my way back home. I was immediately surprised, though, with just how foggy it was outside that night. I suppose the fog was rolling in because it was beginning to get quite cold outside lately, and the ground was still warm from the day. It was so foggy it was hard to see where I was going. I'd made this walk thousands of times, though, and it was like second nature to me. I even knew the exact moment I passed by that house that was always for sale. When I did so, a random thought occurred to me. I began to wonder what that house might look like covered in a deep fog like this. It was certainly spooky looking to begin with. I reached into my bag to grab my cell phone and turned on the light, shining it at the direction of the house. Turned out it did look pretty spooky. The light from my phone was also shining off the fog, which was giving it a cool-looking effect, too. It was then, when my gaze lowered to the for sale sign, it had a sign on it now in addition that said it was reduced price. For some reason, I thought this was weird. I guess it didn't have to be. A house being on sale for years would of course be reduced because no one wanted to buy it. At the time, I just thought it was really weird for some reason, though. Although I eventually walked home and got out of the fog, I couldn't get it out of my head how weird I thought it was. When I brought it up to Reed, he said it didn't surprise him. According to him, the reason why the house was empty was because a family was murdered there or something and it was haunted. Of course, the typical answer any kid who didn't actually know what happened would give for why a house was going unsold. I never really bought it, though. You know, the whole Amityville house never went unsold. It was bought within a year of the murders. Then, a year after that family moved out, it was inhabited constantly afterwards. Each of the three next owners living 10 to 20 years in the residence. It's all a made-up story. I didn't buy that crap about murder houses going empty. I went home, but I did tell Reed about it the other day. He just fell back on the murder story again and the possibility the place might be haunted or whatever. While we played video games, he kept going back to the topic, though, and suggested maybe I should try breaking into the house and checking it out myself. Stuff like that, I have to admit, I had begun thinking about recently. That night, as I walked home, it was just as foggy as it had been that other time. When I went by the house, I began thinking about what Reed had said earlier. It was quite tempting in the moment. I honestly wanted to go and see if there really was anything weird about this house. I decided to do it. I thought it would be better to enter through the backyard. If I was going to break in and enter a home, even an empty one, it seemed best to do it from a place that no one else would see you. I went around the back and tried to find an easy way to get in. I was surprised when I found that one of the windows was actually unlocked and there was no screen either. 
I opened up the window and dragged myself into the house. I didn't turn on any of the lights. I guess I assumed the electricity wouldn't even be on at this point. I began looking around the house. There was nothing weird about it really. It was really dark and dusty though. I supposed it hadn't had a good cleaning in a long while. Maybe that's why it hadn't sold. There was nothing obvious in it though that indicated to me why no one would want to live in this house. That's when I walked into the living room and I saw it. In the far corner of the room, there was a man. He was leaned up against the corner, one leg splayed and the other crooked. He had a knife in his hand and was using it to whittle a piece of wood. As my eyes adjusted, I could tell he was staring right at me. I couldn't make out all the details of his face because it was so dark, but before I could react in any way, the man called out in a scary voice. What the fuck are you doing in my house? He jumped to his feet quicker than I thought possible and rushed at me with his knife. He would have easily caught me if my flight instinct hadn't kicked in right then. I jumped out of the window like Superman and landed on the ground. Looking back, I saw him catching up to the window. One of his legs was already out, as if he were coming after me. I did the only thing I could think to do. I booked it and ran like the great Jesse Owens, and no one could catch me in this moment. I didn't stop until my candy ass was home. No, I didn't call the police either. I had no idea what to tell them. The only person I talked to about this was Reed, and he didn't believe me. He thought I was just trying to scare him like he always did to me, and I can't exactly blame him. After that, I began taking a different way to my friend's house, and I never walked by that home again. So right off, I don't have a freaking car, and it really sucks. Whenever I go anywhere, I always have to go by foot, and it gets old pretty quickly. Anyhow, I didn't write this out to complain about that, though. I wrote it to tell you all about something that happened to me one night when I was walking alone in the fog. I live in a small town. I think the biggest thing about my town is that it's just off an exit to a major highway. So, right off the exit, there are a lot of fast food restaurants and gas stations. Of course, a lot of out-of-towners stop by and shop there. When the nighttime hits, though, it's like a ghost town. I was sitting at home, up really late at night. I had slept all day and was looking for something to do. I was out of beer and figured I should walk to the gas station and get me some more. So, I set out walking. You know, we usually don't have really thick fogs around this area, but this one was so thick I could only see a foot or two in front of my face. It was like the fog you read about in stories, but you never really see in real life. I almost even changed my mind about going. I realized though just how much I really wanted that beer, so I kept on trucking on. I got to the end of my neighborhood and began walking along the highway. Now remind you, this wasn't the freeway they got off of, this was the highway, so this late at night it was pretty empty. I had to go over a bridge that spanned a train track in a forest, then down a short hill in order to get to the gas station. I was walking and had just made it to the bridge. Keep in mind it was still difficult to see anything as I went along, so this bridge crossing was much more intimidating than usual. As I was walking, I started to smell something strange. It took me a few moments to figure out exactly what it was though. It smelled like wood burning. My grandma used to have a wood burning stove in her living room and it smelled almost exactly like that. I thought that was pretty odd. What was someone doing out here in a forest burning something under the bridge? What if a forest fire started or something? I thought maybe I should go and check this out. I made my way to the far side of the bridge. Once I got there, I looked down the hill, which was fairly steep. I wondered if it was too steep to climb down in the fog. I had never actually been down this area before. I walked a little bit down in the fog, bracing myself against some trees as I went down the hill with each step. I considered turning around and making my way back up the hill, but the smell just got stronger as I went further down. I honestly thought there might be a small forest fire or something and I should check it out to make sure and report it. 
Maybe I would even be able to do something about it. All of a sudden, though, I heard a loud voice yelling at me. Who the hell are you? I looked around, but was unable to find anyone in the thick fog. I slipped a bit on the hill when I heard it, and fell on my butt. I looked up again, only to see the hugest man I had ever seen in my lifetime, silhouetted in the fog. He was quickly making his way up the hill. I scampered to my feet, getting mud all over me. I kept my eyes on this figure as I got up and tried to turn around. What the hell did you see? The man asked me as he continued making his way up the hill. What the hell did you see? I didn't see anything, I replied. I turned around and tried to get up the hill, but I fell down on my face again. I got up and started climbing as best as able. Once I got back to the road, I ran across it real quickly. There was a big diesel that crossed the street right after me. He honked his horn at me as if I was in his way. When the truck had passed by, I looked back across the road. I saw the shadow of the man in the fog, but that was all. I turned and ran to the gas station. I told what happened to the skeptical cashier, who thankfully still called the police. If something was going down under that bridge, they needed to know. The police found a Woodfield fire under the bridge and a bunch of dead animals as well, but that was all. It was just a terrifying thing to experience. I can honestly say I never want to experience anything like that ever again. Okay, so this is a little weird and I can understand immediately if some people might not believe me, but I have to let you know it's 100% true and is also scary as well. This happened a long time ago, but I've always remembered it, mostly because of a scene from Stephen King's It. That memory prevented me from telling this story out of fear, but I decided to finally share it. I remember when I first moved out of my parents' house, and I got a dirty little studio apartment in a crappy part of town, on the full other side of the city. I got a job working at a Taco Bell, and I worked a late night shift. This meant I was always walking home late at night. The area I lived in tended to get really foggy. It wasn't so bad that you couldn't see where you were going at all. It was just pretty annoying. Sometimes, though, it could be really cool dependent on what mood you were in. Since this was a late night, the store closed at 4 in the morning. Needless to say, I was pretty damn exhausted. There were several of us there. The rest of the guys told me they could tell I was tired and told me to leave early while they cleaned up. I was so tired as I left the store, I just edged along as normal. This early in the dark morning, the fog was still present as I was walking along. I didn't think about it too much though. I was too exhausted to think. I just wanted to get home and rest. I was walking along the side of the road in the gutter. Once I arrived home, I would probably fall asleep right away. It didn't help that my eyes were going in and out of focus in the fog. When I snapped out of it though, I could have sworn I could hear someone talking. Yeah, someone talking isn't a big deal, but when you're walking alone in the dark at 4 a.m., and you suddenly hear something like that, it startles you. I tried to listen, and I began to hear something again. It was definitely a voice. I looked around trying to see if anyone was there. Yeah, it was foggy, but like I said, it wasn't so foggy I couldn't see around at all. No matter how hard I looked though, I kept hearing this voice, but I couldn't see where it was coming from. Finally, I followed the voice, enough to get around to where it was coming from. When I got there, and I finally saw where the voice was emerging from, I could tell it was more than one voice. As I got even closer, I noticed it seemed to be coming from underneath a sewer grate. I walked right over to the sewer, and leaned in a bit to hear better what they were saying. This was so weird, imagining that someone was down there talking right now. I didn't even know this part of the sewer was big enough to let people walk around in, then again, I suppose that's what manholes are for. They wouldn't be there otherwise. I looked down through the holes in the grating, trying to get a better picture of what was going on. When I finally began to make out what was being said, I froze. I'll never forget. It was very distinct. Go on, grab his legs, 
we have to make sure no one ever finds him. Even though it was foggy, and even though it was dark, I could see someone in the sewer carrying something large. I now had to assume this was another person, and clearly they were not alone. As they passed underneath the grate I was above, one of the men looked right up, and my eyes met his. We stared at each other for over a second, before I realized I needed to get the hell out of there. I was much closer to the Taco Bell than I was to home, so I took off running and ran to the Taco Bell. My co-workers, of course, didn't believe me and wouldn't let me use the phone to call the cops. I couldn't use it on my own because only the manager had permission to use it, and he wouldn't let me by the time I got a ride home from my friend. I kind of just gave up on the idea of it, and the guys had to be long gone anyway. There was no way I was going to find them. So whatever they were doing, I guess they got away with it in the end. This is about a really freaky experience I had while working at the Barnes & Noble in Crystal Lake, Illinois. I remember working at the information deck on this day when I received a phone call and answered it. The person on the other end claimed to be a person working for a local newspaper. I would later find out that this was not true. It was in actuality a person working at the Borders Bookstore in Gurney, Illinois. I only found this out because one of my good friends worked at that store and told me about it happening. The guy from the Borders store asked me about the store being haunted. I told him I'd never heard of such a thing. He asked to speak to a manager. I was right beside the manager in that moment, who did tell him that the haunting was just a rumor and there was no validity to it. After the phone call, I asked the manager what that was all about, and she told me the store had a reputation for being haunted. Employees who worked there before her reported it often. It had even been written about in a book of some sort. I guess around Halloween time they always got calls from people asking about the haunting. It was simple things like book carts being moved without anyone being around, or books falling off the shelves when they had no reason to be doing that. I guess there were some sorts of physical entities that were supposed to appear as well. Supposedly a blue ball of light, or an old man who looked like a farmer. All of the current employees at the store had never seen anything though, so it was all considered to be made up bullshit. I'm not going to be one of those people who claims they didn't believe in ghosts before my experience. Honestly, whenever I hear someone claim that, I roll my eyes. I seriously doubt they were skeptical to begin with, and they just claim that in order to make their story seem more believable. I'm going to admit straight up that I did believe in ghosts, although I'd never actually experienced a haunting before. I just felt a world in which ghosts existed was a lot more interesting than one in which they did not. It was about a week later when I was working on a closing shift. I had begun reorganizing our manga and graphic novel section, which had a tendency to get messed up. The managers always had to keep one employee in the store with them after closing. I wasn't done with my work, so I agreed to stay behind. It generally took the manager an hour and a half to finish working, and I intended to use that time to get all my work done. The store was always dark after closing. You know, you can't let people think the store is still open. I have to admit, it was pretty creepy, sitting in that big dark store all alone. The manager was in the back office, and the office door was locked because he was counting money. I finally finished the majority of my work. Then, I noticed that once I had everything shelved, there was a large empty spot. I'd worked so hard at that point that I wanted to go and get some more books, just to make it perfect. There weren't any on the book cards though, so I had to go to the back room. Our back room was huge and had tons of shelves. The shelves didn't have backs on them, so you could see all the way through to the other parts of the stock room. Still, they were sort of overstocked with books in some parts, so if someone had been there, it would have been easy for them to sneak up on you, I guess. I didn't really feel that anything like that was likely to happen though. Just my own mind making up a fear from the atmosphere. The lighting was very dim in there. I didn't really think about turning more lights on though. I'd been back there plenty of times and would only be there for a few moments anyway. It was really creepy in there at this moment. 
At the time, I had forgotten all about the whole haunted talk I had with the other manager. I went to the overstock shelf. They had the unshelved graphic novels on them. I picked up a small dolly's worth of books. I took some books and laid them down on the dolly. I think it was after I'd pretty much filled it up when I stood back up and looked through the shelves, only to come face to face with a man standing on the other side. He was looking right at me, and he looked extremely angry. I yelled and nearly fell backward, taking my eyes off him for a moment. When I looked back up though, he was already gone. I thought he had to still be in the stock room, possibly coming around the shelf for me. I left the graphic novels behind and ran for the stock room door. I exited and ran to the office. I pounded on the door, and when the manager opened, I told him someone was in the store with us. He had to still be in there too, because the alarms would have been set off if he'd gone through the door. We barricaded ourselves in the office and looked through all the security cameras. The police came, and just like us, they couldn't find anything. One of the policemen told us he thought we were playing a prank because he had been called out a few years before for a very similar story. They found no one then either, and the alarms never went off either. The person couldn't have left. It was also an angry man who was spotted in the back room. We were freaked out. Most of the other employees didn't believe us though, and they thought I made it up because of receiving that phone call about the haunting. But no, I'm sure I really did see a man back there.